And I'm Anderson Cooper here in Tampa. Our coverage continues uh, as it has been uh, for the last uh, really all weekend long. Uh, it, the situation in Tampa is uh, is watching. And then inside and the restaurant shoved everything up against the western wall of this place. And your heart just breaks. Peter, the owner of this place, I just left him a voicemail. One of his employees told me he had AAA insurance. I hope that's the case because this is a total, total write-off. You can see these, these were all uh, slips for jet skis that have been shoved up, that blown into the restaurants. This was a hugely popular place on the Atlantic side of Key Largo. Uh, an institution for many years. Peter's from the Netherlands. He bought it a couple of years ago, expanded it. Uh, but this, if this is a sample of what we're going to find down in Key West, uh, you know, paradise, the southern paradise of the United States as we know it, has fundamentally changed, Anderson. You know, Bill, I know we have some day before uh, and what it looks like now. Uh, there were so many people, Bill, who you had talked to uh, who were talking about riding out the storm. Some of them did change their minds in the last minute, uh, but a lot of people did stay in the Keys. A lot of people stayed. A lot of people stayed because they were afraid of gas lines or they didn't want to get on the highway. Uh, but this, I'm guessing this might serve as a lesson. Uh, and over to this side here, uh, Rod, if you wouldn't show up. I, I just, I really can't get over it. I mean, we did all of our morning live shots here on Friday. We had, you know, tap water coffee at the bar standing right here. You know, it's hard as a reporter. You come in, you meet people, you hear their stories of what it was like before uh, the devastation hit. Uh, but to have spent some time here and now see it in this way uh, is just, I, I, I get a little taste. Residents of Florida uh, who live and love this place are in for uh, in the worst hit parts of Burma. Uh example of how everyone was saying you've got to get out of florida you got to get out of tampa you could get hit but you never know how these storms are going to change and i came here from texas directly from texas after harvey and when you see what happened there i think those images coming out of texas i think for a lot of people it really influenced them to not take that chance and it's always worth it because you just never know what these storms can do but yes now that we are the storm has passed us. I can tell you that the winds have shifted direction now, and it really is more of a spritzing of the rain, on, at least where I'm standing in downtown Tampa, and it's way more about the rain at the point at this point here. Um, I checked in with the police here in Tampa, and they said that lots of calls about uh, maybe down trees and power lines being down. They're not going after those calls just yet. Uh, but they did say that they uh, were going to wait for the rescues, anything that had needed to happen after that. But so far, fingers this is crossed, Jacksonville. it's looking like... Okay, there is record flooding in Jacksonville. And you can see that a car with its brake lights on is submerged up to its windows. Um, there is a flash flood emergency in downtown Jacksonville. This was taken moments ago. It's hard to know if anyone is in that car. Um, or what emergency responders are doing there. But that is the scene we're seeing in town after town after town throughout Florida. This storm went from the furthest point south up all the way up the state. And Over CNN Pelican Island, which is just off of Miami, and you can see what Hurricane Irma did to so many of the boats that were out there in the water for this storm. The problem was is that tropical storm force winds and then hurricane force winds here in Miami, they hit for 12 straight hours, and no matter how well you tie your boat down, no matter how many preparations you take, sometimes it's just not enough, and boats did get tossed around. We were at a marina all day yesterday, and we saw a boat with eight ropes on it. Seven of the ropes came undone, and for so much of the time, it was dangling on one rope precariously all day. So you can see just one scene of the devastation from Hurricane Irma, and that's here on the southeast coast of Florida. The devastation all the way up the west coast as well. Let's go to Ryan Young in Clearwater, Florida. Ryan. John, look, we were in Clearwater last night getting pounded by the winds. We actually experienced wind gusts of above uh, 80 miles per hour. You look behind us now, you can still see police officers who are blocking off the bridge here to the beach. That's uh, as a precaution, and we've seen many people getting turned around. But you see these signs of 
of just sheer power because of the wind. You see that the wind just relentlessly ripped things apart. As we drew, drove through the area, we could see down trees. We did see some down power lines. And we've also seen police officers all over the area as they start to kind of make sure people don't come out. We, of course, we've seen a lot of people with their cameras sticking out of their cars, trying to just drive around and see what's going on. But you also see scenes like this, and I want to show you this. Look at the size of this tree right here. That is a palm tree ripped off from another location and thrown here. This weighs over 100 pounds, so you can imagine what would have happened if this would have hit somebody as they were outside. So that's good news that no one was hurt in this area. We'll show you some video as we were driving around. We went through some neighborhoods, talked to some people. Look, one homeowner says they were so worried about what was going on that they actually took their kitchen table, took that apart, and put it up against their windows to make sure they had some sort of shutters, but that didn't save his car. Listen to what he had to say about what happened last night. Kind of like a thunkin' crash all at once. And my wife jumped up and said, I think something just broke. <laughs> yeah, well, it broke. So, it's not, I don't think it's too bad. So you can hear what he was talking about in terms of that car was uh, just sort of mangled by the tree next door. And actually, about four houses down, we saw more neighbors with uh, their trees on top of their homes. So you understand what people are sort of assessing right now. So, Chris, as you can see in this area, people will be having stories about what's happened uh, for the next few days as they try to clean up. A lot of people, though, with happy spirits in terms of just being able to make it through what they heard last night in terms of the wind, rain, and all that water. Hey, Ryan, I'll take it from here. Thank you very much. We've just been walking around here getting a sense of how quickly these stores can open in Naples. We had store owners saying, let them know we're going to be open for business. We're going to be open for business. And this is the best news that you can have. Everybody wants to get back to normal. Let's bring in Mayor Criticos of um, Clearwater, Florida. Mr. Mayor, can you hear us? Good morning. Yes, sir. All right. So what are you dealing with there now, sir? I I'm sorry. What are you dealing with there now, sir? Oh, well, first off, Chris, what in Ellis County, Clearwater, St. Petersburg, the storm was coming directly to us, but it, it shifted. Uh, our biggest problem now is just a, a lack of power. About 70% of the county doesn't have power. Uh, we're encouraging people to please stay indoors still until we can get finish our assessments of the damage. Uh, but it wasn't as great as it could have been. Well, look, that is the... Andrew James Knox. You see the pain in the faces of all of those this morning remembering...